Pattern predictions, one degree outside weather network looking out across the next two weeks. This is a Tuesday, October 28th recording for you here. We do this once a week to give you an outlook over the next 14 days. If all you want is the 14 day forecast, you want our app. That's the one degree outside weather app on the app store and Google play. It is free and five stars. Some of you have decided to support our mission. We appreciate that. Just about everything we do is free. So what we do is we offer some exclusive insider content or just a chance to support the mission at membership.1degreeoutside.com. All right, let's start out with the jet stream pattern here and of course the jet stream the fast river of air high in the sky that steers storm system separates cold air from the north from warm to the south here goes what's left of melissa continuing to track off to the northeast and getting swept away by the jet stream no chance of it coming up this way as a matter of fact instead the westerlies as we call the jet streams increasing in speed over the coming days, very common for this time of the year as we set up more of a clash between cold to the north and warm to the south. And look at that jet stream ripping in off the Gulf of Alaska, coming in across the Pacific Northwest. This is going to mean a period of big storms out by Alaska. But what it also means is a series of fast-moving disturbances dropping down into a trough, a dip in the jet stream here in the northeast that tends to allow for colder than normal conditions and disturbances to come and go. All the while, we're building the snowpack across North America. If we go through the predicted snow over the course of the next 10 days, you can see we really add to it again. We get that storminess coming off the Gulf of Alaska. But, oh, look at this expansion of snow that takes place across a lot of Canada, across Hudson Bay, and, yes, into the northern tier of the United States. Wait a minute. Let's zoom that in a little bit. Yes, a little bit of snow in the next two weeks coming down to the mountains of northern New England. A little bit more on that in just a second. Let's go ahead and take a look, first of all, at precipitation. We're getting about probably either side of an inch as we get to the end of this week as of this recording. And that is when most of the precipitation falls over the next two weeks. So even if there's a chance of a little snow coming into play heading into the second week uh, in the mountains, it probably wouldn't be with a lot of precipitation. You look at the chance of precipitation, obviously it's elevated with the shot that comes in later this week, goes up again as we head into the first few days of November, goes up again as we head into the end of next week. So let's go ahead and break it down. 500 millibar heights, we love to show this to you. Nice way to gauge average temperature through a deep column of the atmosphere. Lower height, colder average temperature, colder colors, what we put on the map. Warmer average temperatures, higher heights, and the warmer colors. So interesting, we've got a bit of what we call a blocking pattern where you've got high over low in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That usually means you've got a slow moving pattern. That's exactly what sets up as we had later on this week. And that's why you get this kind of slow moving meandering upper level storm that'll be around. But what's also really interesting is the fact that with the big storminess going on out in the Gulf of Alaska, if you think about the way the atmosphere works, it works with waves and what we call long waves and short waves. The short waves are disturbances. The long waves govern the overall pattern. So if you've got a big dip that's back out over Alaska, you've got to get a big bump or a ridge in the western to central U.S., and that's going to promote a big dip right into the northeast. And look at this. As we go out through time, even as new disturbances come in, there's the dip. There is that new energy kind of carving out. So when we put it together, those chances for a few flakes come with each of these disturbances. So that would be maybe a little bit in the mountains around November 1st, but then again around the 4th into the 5th. And then again, as we head toward the end of the period around the 7th, you've got another one that comes in here. And that also may bring at least some amount of accumulating snow to the mountains of northern New England. Notice we never shake the pattern. You never get rid of that trough, that dip in the jet stream, that colder air kind of pouring in and actually get these shades of the polar vortex trying to set up already early in the season in Canada, but it remains transient right now. It's not going to sit there for a long period of time. In terms of high temperatures going out over the next 14 days, it's not surprising given what we just looked at with the jet stream, with the heights uh, to 500 millibars, it should be colder than normal. It is overall colder than normal. Doesn't mean there's not an exception here and there, but generally that's what we're doing, and that would be the same for low temperatures, where actually New England's average low hangs out near the freezing mark for several days or at least a few days on end as we get out toward the end of next week. So that's the rundown in your pattern predictions of the next two weeks. Just a reminder, we are streaming this along with all of our other videos. And you know what? Danielle has been doing a phenomenal job covering Melissa. If you're watching this later in the week, you're going to see all the outlines on what's going on with the disturbance dropping in, the rain, the wind, and again, the chance for snowflakes at times. It's all at one degree outside dot live or on your smart TV. Open up that YouTube app, do a search for one degree outside network. Of course, you'll find it all atop that five star free one degree outside app. We'll see you again in just a little while.